The universe is massive, with many parts of it still unknown to us. Even when it comes to our own solar system, there are still a lot of unanswered questions we need to solve. One example of this is Saturn's largest moon, Titan, which is nearly 50% wider than Earth's moon. In today's video, we will be uncovering everything we currently know about the extraordinary world surrounding Titan. Many scientists believe that the conditions found on Titan resemble what the early years on Earth might have looked like. The main difference between an early Earth and Titan is that because Earth is closer to the Sun, it has always been warmer. According to NASA, Titan is in many respects one of the most Earth-like worlds we have found to date. Our solar system is home to more than 150 moons, and currently, Titan is the only known moon in our solar system to have a substantial atmosphere containing a small amount of methane. Discovered in 1944 by Dutch astronomer Gerard Kuiper, Titan's atmosphere is shown to be much denser and hazier in comparison to Earth's. Although, both are made up mostly of nitrogen, with Titan's atmosphere being about 95% nitrogen and 5% methane. However, similar to Earth, Titan's thick atmosphere is made up mostly of nitrogen. In fact, one cool thing about Titan's nitrogen atmosphere is that it's dense enough that you could walk around on its surface without a pressurized spacesuit. The only thing you would need is an oxygen mask and protection against the cold, given Titan's surface-level temperature is around minus 179 degrees Celsius. The first probe to the Saturnian system was Pioneer 11 back in 1979. This mission ultimately revealed that Saturn's Titan moon was most likely too cold to support life. With an orange haze covering Titan's surface, for many decades it was a mystery what lied below on the moon's surface. Given Titan's atmosphere is so high, for many years, scientists even believed Titan was the largest moon in our entire solar system. That was until in 1980 that the Voyager program came close enough to Titan to help researchers discover that it was in fact smaller than Jupiter's Ganymede moon. Even with this new information, the mystery remained on what was hidden behind Titan's hazy atmosphere. Then, in 1997, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency collaborated in building the Cassini space probe. In 2004, the Cassini space probe became the first human-made object to orbit Saturn. Attached to the Cassini spacecraft, the Huygens probe detached itself and parachuted down into Titan's landing on the surface on January 5, 2005. This landing made history as the first landing of a probe in the outer solar system. During its descent and landing on the surface of Titan, the Huygens probe collected images and atmospheric data, and then relayed that back to the Cassini space probe. And over the next 13 years, Cassini performed 127 close flybys of Titan while in Saturn's orbit. With the Cassini mission, researchers were able to discover that Titan did in fact have clouds, rain, lakes, and rivers all from liquid hydrocarbons, such as ethane and methane. After gathering data from this mission, scientists now believe Titan's polar lakes host more natural gas and other liquid hydrocarbons than all the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth. According to computer modeling, 75% of a polar lake on Titan is ethane, with 10% being methane, 7% being propane, and a smaller percentage being hydrogen cyanide, butane, nitrogen, and argon respectively. By some estimates, the visible lakes and seas on Titan contain 300 times the volume of Earth's proven oil reserves. In addition to the lakes on Titan, the desert sand dunes on the equator also hold more organics than all of Earth's coal reserves. With all these natural resources, perhaps one day in the future humans will begin extracting the abundance of resources found on the Moon. On top of this, it was found that Titan did in fact have a subsurface ocean of salty water. Based on these two major discoveries, NASA researchers now believe that there are two potentially habitable places for life on Titan. Titan's subsurface ocean might be a place where life as we know it exists, or its surface lakes and seas of liquid hydrocarbon might have life as we don't know exists. With that being said, Titan could also just be a lifeless world. What's important is that we continue to explore the world of Titan, given its complex chemistry and unique environment unlike most other moons in our solar system. Titan's internal structure is still fairly unknown, but one research model based on data gathered from the Cassini mission believes Titan has five primary layers. The innermost layer is a core of silicate rock that stretches to around 2,500 miles in diameter. Surrounding the rock core is a shell of water ice known as Ice 6 that is only found at extremely high pressures. 
The high pressure ice is then covered by a layer of salty liquid water, which sits below an outer crust of water ice. This surface is then coated with organic molecules sitting on the surface in the form of sands and liquids. Around the equator, vast regions of dark dunes spread across Titan's landscape, similar in appearance to dunes found in the desert of Namibia in Africa. The dark sand found in these dunes is made of dark hydrocarbon grains that look similar to coffee grounds. Titan only has a few visible impact craters, meaning the surface may be relatively young, with some evidence of impacts having likely been erased over time. In 2014, scientists also discovered a new transient feature on Titan that they now refer to as Magic Island. On Titan's surface, there is an abundance of methane lakes mainly concentrated near its south pole. Sometimes it's possible that nitrogen bubbles form on the surface of these lakes for a period of time, creating a temporary island known as Magic Island that eventually dissipates. By having liquid methane and ethane lakes and seas, Titan is one of the only other worlds we know of in our solar system that has stable liquids on its surface. Going back to Titan's atmosphere, there is an unresolved mystery surrounding it. Because methane is broken down over time by sunlight, researchers are currently trying to figure out what other source is replenishing the methane in Titan's atmosphere. One potential source of methane activity could be volcanic activity, but this has yet to be confirmed. Some researchers have now begun theorizing that Titan may have ice volcanoes on its surface. Although no ice volcanoes have been confirmed, many believe that ice volcanoes are the only possible explanation for the high levels of methane in Titan's atmosphere. Since there is not enough liquid methane on the surface to maintain the observed levels of atmospheric methane, this theory does seem plausible. In 2008, two potential ice volcanoes appeared to be spewing water and ammonia, the latter being the source of atmospheric methane. However, this discovery is not yet confirmed to be ice volcanoes. One cool side effect of Titan's dense atmosphere and gravity roughly equal to Earth's moon is that a raindrop falling in Titan's sky falls about six times slower than Earth's rain. The added bonus is that Titan's raindrops on average are about 50% larger than an Earth raindrop. In terms of future missions to Titan, there have been many conceptual missions proposed by NASA, the ESA, and Jet Propulsion Lab. In each of these proposed missions, humanity would send a robotic space probe to Titan. However, at the moment, none of these missions have become funded yet, so we will likely have to wait a bit longer. One example of a proposed mission was the Titan-Saturn System mission, which was a joint NASA and ESA proposal for exploration of Saturn's moons. This mission envisioned a hot air balloon floating in Titan's atmosphere for six months with an estimated cost of $2.5 billion. Another proposed mission was made in early 2012 by Jason Barnes, a scientist at the University of Idaho. The mission would be for an unmanned drone to fly through Titan's atmosphere and take high-definition images of Titan's surface below. In the end, NASA did not end up approving the mission's request for $715 million, so the mission's future remains uncertain at this time. As Saturn's largest moon, Titan is one of the most Earth-like worlds we have encountered in our solar system, and with new space research being done every day around the world, we will continue to make more incredible discoveries about the moon going forward. What do you think of Titan? If given a chance to travel anywhere in our solar system, would Titan make it on your list? Also, what kind of potential do you see Titan having for human civilizations in the future? Let me know down below in the comments, I'm curious to know. And as always, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this every week.